I want to take us back to think about how we extend measurements from the clinic to beyond the clinic. So just recall the experience you had in your recent visit to the clinic. You know, you went there with some signs and symptoms and the physician sat you down and they examined and they concluded from that, okay, this is where you are and this is what you're experiencing and they made decisions with it. But that was actually an episodic event where for 10 minutes you were in that clinic but the remainder of the day and the remainder of your life, you're actually living outside the clinic. So what we want to think of is how do we extend the ability to observe from the clinic to beyond the clinic to your home and the 99% of the time that you're not in the clinic. How can we do that? So we want to talk about activities that you do. And in particular, I'm going to show you a new sensor that our team came up with. We call it the fingernail sensor. It's a prototype that I'm showing you here. It was published recently with results that are described in the paper. But I'm going to demonstrate to you what this device does. It is a fingernail sensor. And as you can see, it is a very prototypey thing right now. The eventual form in which this device will be used is not what it looks like here. Rather, think of it as the same form factor as your nail itself, that thickness that size that is just pasted on your nail. And that's the device, okay? But I will demonstrate to you what this prototype device does already. So what is it designed to do? It is actually designed to capture a few signals. So <clears throat> if you get to the signal on the screen, what you see here, I'm showing you actually three traces that are being continuously produced. The top one is actually coming straight from the sternum, and in this case, this actually is just a device that I happen to have as a phone that I'm using to give you signal from uh, the phone on, uh, on, on my sternum. On the fingernail sensor, I actually have the ability to pick up two additional signals. One is the strain, and another is actually the acceleration that this device is producing. So what can this do? I will show you, for example, that if I was, were, to, were to hold an object, the act of gripping that object produces a new signal of strain. So as I do that, we, we will see a signal. What I have produced for you is a video where this device actually then creates a whole variety of new signals. So if you were to actually cut to the, uh, to the video, and I will walk you through some of these signals. So on that, what you see is holding objects with my hand. And what is this producing? This is actually producing the act of gripping an object, holding it, turning it. Each of those is actually creating new strain information from the tip of your digits. And it is producing signals of not only the act of holding and gripping, but through the application of appropriate AI classification techniques, we can actually then learn from that instant of that signal what is the activity that you as the individual is carrying out. Not only what activity, but how well you're performing that activity. Quantify actually the amount of strain and force that you're applying as you do each of these activities. And these are not synthetic activities that you do over in the clinic, but rather these are activities that you do in your normal daily life. And of course, if you happen to have specific changes to how you carry out those activities, either because you of known movement disorders or because some modulation that is occurring to your activity that you aren't even aware of. For example, cardiovascular disease is known to modulate your grip strength. If those changes are occurring well before you actually know that those changes are occurring, just by monitoring the activity itself, as is shown in this video, you begin to pick up those changes. Also illustrated here is a specific example of a subject actually sitting and standing. You may sit and stand without the assistance of your hands, or you may sit and stand by holding the armrests. And because you're gripping the armrest, the fingernail sensor is actually able to tell us how much force you're exerting as you hold the armrest to sit and stand. And then, of course, 
if as an individual, you have difficulty in getting up out of a chair, in, as the demonstration showed over there, that act itself can also be seen as a different signal, okay? So what have I shown you here? That by putting sensors on the digits on the extremities of your hand and then going about doing activities as you would normally in itself actually produces a wealth of new information of how well you're carrying out those activities and whether there is any change, even a gradual change, that can be tracked over time, right? So that's sort of the uh, ability of this one sensor to give us that signal. Of course, this sensor alone is not what is all that is relevant. This, together with additional information, like the movement I was showing you with just a phone placed on the body is allowing me to see whether I'm actually sitting or standing, and then using this fingernail sensor, I can put that together and say, did I hold the armrest to get up out of a chair? And activities of that kind, like activities in the kitchen, holding your toothbrush, uh, grabbing a door handle, all of those are just normal activities that in itself are able to produce a signal, right? So that's what I'm showing you here is a way to extend the ability to observe from that episodic event in the clinic to actually continuous observations that can occur in your normal daily life, okay? And this then has ability to provide quantitative information with regard to changes in your signs and symptoms as your disease progresses or as subtle changes begin to occur that you are not even still recognizing as a disease. Okay, thank you for your attention.